Hi, I'm Nikki. Welcome to Zeroplex and let's talk about sports. Whether it's Novak Djokovic or Roger Federer, LeBron James or Kevin Durant, Lewis Hamilton or Sebastian Vettel, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo, Aaron Rodgers or Peyton Manning, if you like to watch them in action, you're a sports fan. You're only one of millions, possibly billions of people who are. But why is that? Why do we like watching others play sports? And not just have fun playing them ourselves? The short answer might seem obvious. It is entertaining and provides a distraction from real life. However, it can't be the only reason. Because there are many other things that do exactly that, but are not that popular, like fishing, stamp collecting or paintball. So let's just dig a bit deeper and see what else is out there. In spite of the corruption, cheating and scandals, world-class athletes continue to inspire us by giving us strongest, quickest, smartest and most skilled performances. All professional athletes are people who strive for excellence every day, breaking the limits of what seems possible. And as LeBron said in NBA 2K game a few years ago, when you feel like you've reached your limit, it's only the beginning. That is why they all inspire us to push limits in all the things we do. Watching somebody you like become better every day makes you want to do the same thing too. Sport also touches the depths of our emotions. I don't cry that often, but when I do, it's probably because my team wants something. It's usually my national team giving me eye water works. Actually, I don't ever cry. How can I? I'm a man. It's just my eyes watering a bit more for unknown reason. When my nation wins something important, many people get on the streets to celebrate. When we lose something, there are very few people on the streets. That's gonna mean I'm not the only one feeling like this. It also lets us believe in the impossible. How many of you remember Greece national team winning Euro 2004? When even odds of them making it round robin were pretty slim. Sometimes we can witness the true battle of David and Goliath. Even though some teams have better players, coaches and conditions on paper, they don't always win. That is because luck and decisions of players play an important role in every game. And that brings me to another important reason we like sports so much. It's unpredictability. Even if you stack same teams against each other 10 times, you might have 10 different outcomes. And all 10 games will certainly be different. When you're watching the same movie twice, that's not the case. Even most video games only have one or two endings. But in sport, anything can happen, and that is exciting. It can also give us place in history. Most of us have been lucky enough to have witnessed a historic sporting event. Even if we only watched it by live TV, we may say that we were part of that history. It's something that stays with us, even carries a certain weight to those who will only hear about it later. Sport also engages our mind, obviously. Most sports are physical disciplines. But even a casual fan will tell you that mind and body work together. When somebody gets to the top of their game, the mental aspect is huge. Devising strategy, studying video, researching and developing training technique, and so on. More than any other time in history, sport has now become a science. Do you know what's the biggest difference between tennis players at positions 1 and 20 of rankings on both ATP and WTA lists? It's their mind and their willingness to cope with hard situations, even when they find themselves in them. How many times you watched one of the top few players defend the match ball and then come back to win the game? Many, but you can't say the same for lower ranked players. Last but not least, it validates our competitive nature. Some would say that competitive urges in us are merely primal, animalistic aggression which should be stifled. What should and does separate us from animals in our competitive nature are virtues of respect and honor. Sport impacts our lives at every level of our being, body, mind and soul. But let's not end it here. Let's instead take a look at chemical reactions happening in our body while we watch sports. Watching sports stimulates our hormone levels. Testosterone in particular, 
which is a hormone linked to dominance and social interaction. But it also increases brain power, awareness, and muscle growth. Scientists have found that after watching your team win, levels of testosterone increase significantly. This was also discovered in politics. During 2008 US elections, males who voted for Obama were found to have much higher levels of testosterone after he won than those who voted for McCain. When your favorite athlete or team wins the gold medal or trophy, amount of dopamine produced by your body is also increased. And I mentioned it in my video about this, which you can find right here. It activates pleasure centers in the brain and increases memory and learning ability. This explains why people continue to watch sports. They are looking to recreate physiological excitement they can't forget. Our brain also contains cells called mirror neurons, which are not only activated when we do something, but also when we see somebody else do it or even hear about it. For example, certain mirror neurons will be activated when we throw a ball, see someone else throw a ball, or even hear a word ball. This is the reason we experience similar emotions to somebody else winning. In fact, scientists monitored both athletes and spectators and found out that the same parts of the brain were activated, like the viewer were playing the game. It allows us to understand others' mental states and interpret their actions and intentions, as well as empathize with them. No wonder we're attracted to sports so much. Our brain does all kinds of stuff while we're watching it. Sport is like a drug, but a healthy one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.